What is up, my people? Welcome back to the channel for another session of Singles of the Week. I'm your boy, Nassim the Dream. If you're new to the channel, just go right on ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell as well to always keep notified on my newest content. And you already know how we do. Let's get right into the new singles. To start off, we have this new song from rappers J Tech and Blue with the song Game Boy. The instrumentals, they got a little bit of a blues flair into it with the way these keys are played into the highs and lows. The verses are tight and the melodics are actually very pretty and I think, I think it's quite nice and I think you should just check it out. Next, we have rapper Mass Wolf collabing with none other than Bring Me The Horizon on the song Fallout. And this just, this sounds pretty generic and absolutely uninspired if you ask me it sounds like something that you would hear off a call of duty track and it's just it's hideous i it hurts me to say that for a bring me the horizon song that this song is really hideous that's really the most i can really say about this song this is the kind of hip-hop that just really loses its taste and doesn't really work at all when going into this alternative direction now i gotta catch the play on this again next we got this yeet track featuring lil uzi it's called bing tonka and if you don't know already yeet has got his deluxe version out of his new album to alive out now sadly this ain't the song that was teased onto yeet's instagram that one i was pretty pretty excited about i was really hoping to get a taste of that but um we got two tracks off of that new deluxe album and this is one of them this one is called big tonka if i didn't already say that already but either way this shit is still hard it is still very hard this shit is hard bro like the symphonies on this beat just go really stupid i'm really digging the autotune used on both rappers too i actually think they sound pretty good with each other uh, it's just hard it's a hard song Check it out. We also got some pop bops with the following track, Follow Me with singers Pablo Vittar and Rina Sawayama. Not gonna lie, I wasn't really into the chorus that much on here, but I do like the scene that it creates with that little deep nightclub rave that it's got going on. But I will say the singing, it's fantastic on these verses. They're really great. They both make a great bridge as well. It's not too bad. I think this song could grow on me in the future if this is put on an LP, but we'll see. Spill Tap has a new song called Sunbird. Very, very catchy chorus. The verses are a bit limp compared to the chorus though, but there's also a little bit of a sudden ending on here too, I will mention. But overall, performance is well executed. The production isn't so bad either. To be honest, I like this one. I think it's a decent pop track, you know? Um, it could be on that little, on that balance to either going downward or maybe just staying a little bit neutral, how do you feel about it, but I think you should check it out. Next, we got a little double feature from Kelly Lee Owens, getting a little bit of dark and aggression into that first song, Sonic 8. It's this heavily distorted static electronica instrumental with Kelly giving this little cynical, emotionless presence that feels pretty tense with a lot of the movement going on too and it has a little bit some hushed ad libs onto the playlist too making it feel like pretty creepy if you ask me then going right into this just transitioning right into this ambient experience into the next song olga that makes this combination of like a like a hot and cold fuse i guess you would say like that I don't, the devil and angel aspect i like that more i like the little bit more the, that whole you get started with the devil and then you go back to the angel it's like that soothing feeling that you're safe now i like that aspect that it goes through it's mighty wicked i am loving the experimentation on both tracks loving the combo i think you should just check it out if you were trying it unless you're scared next we got another song from king gizzard and the lizard wizard this is a lot shorter compared to the last song the dripping tap that song if you didn't know was 18 minutes this one's marking about six minutes so but just to say about this track, this is just great. I'm seriously enjoying the hell out of this song. It feels so ancient, it feels exotic, psychedelic, sonic bliss. This instrumental is just so great. The harmonics and the bass rhythms are just awesome. The transitioning passage to passage is pretty good. It's a jam. It's a jam. Try it out. We also got some new Kehlani featuring Justin Bieber. It's called Up At Night. And Kehlani of course, sounds like excellence on this song. The instrumental has a nice bounce to it as well. Justin, on the harmonies, it would have been nice to hear. I really wish they would have worked some harmonics out towards the outro of this song, but really he just only got his own solo verse that to me didn't really stand out too much, but it's, it's still not bad, I guess. I mean, he still has some purpose onto the song, but overall, the song's catchy, it's very lovely, it's a good R&B pop tune. Check it out. Flume has a song with Caroline Polachek on the song Sirens, getting farther into that experimental electronica with some future bass added to the touch here as well. This drop is, it's odd. It's odd. It's kind of cryptic too, if you ask me. It sounds like something that you would hear 
out of a very very advanced electronic music like an experimentation i guess like something that you wouldn't really be ready for it's kind of risky like putting it out there like that i mean i'm sure flume's fan base knows what to expect for the most part with flume music especially if you're still a flume fan at this point so i'm sure they're pretty um they're pretty suited and accustomed to the advancements that it gets when it comes to sound design but to me this feels like some kind of like holy and gospel vibe to it with the melodics the way they're just kind of put on here this is it's unique there's something there's something about this song that feels really unique very complex that i really like about it and like i said it can be hard to follow along with but if you can follow along with it it pulls through then we got freddie gibbs collabing with ricky rose and kenny beats on the song ice cream plain and simple this shit's a banger it's a fucking banger freddie just doesn't fuck around he is eating this damn verse up like it's a fucking ice cream ross enters this verse like a boss i fucking hate myself nah this shit's hard though for real it's very hard this is a hip-hop banger it slaps that 808 you can feel that shit right in your upper lip sick dude also got some new sean mendes out with the song when you're gone and it's not really far off from your standard rock pop breakup ballad and it's it's manageable sure it's manageable but forgettable at the same time too i'm not really sure how sean mendes fans will feel about this song i mean i'm sure they'll feel for him this might have some relation to do with the camilla cabello breakup but I'm sure, for most part, Mendez fans will enjoy this one, but for me, I'm kind of on it right now. Next up, we got Lil TJ with the song In My Head, which goes off with a little bit of a revitalization of Ayaz's replay, or at least it tries to revitalize the song. I honestly think it kind of sucks. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, dude, I, I don't think it's good. I, I don't really think it's good. It, it goes off with some more New York-style drill inspirations that... I just think come off so boring to the core. I really can't say I enjoyed this song. We also got the band Beach Bunny adding another addition to their upcoming LP. This song is called Fire Escape. And I am leaning a little bit towards the mild side with this song compared to Oxygen, which was, I believe, the first single released for this upcoming LP or EP, whatever they want to come out with for their new project. To me, this reminds me of some track that you'd hear in like a scene transition into some teen movie from the 90s. It's not terrible. It just doesn't tickle me pink, if you ask me. Next, we got Mr. Levin Kali with the song Let It Rain. This is a young R&B singer, rapper. If you're not familiar with him at the moment, definitely highly recommend checking him out. He's a very good artist, very good young artist. This song is throwing it back to the 70s with some R&B rhythm, with a hint of disco to it as well. Mixing is great. The vocal layering is alluring. The bass sounds warm and joyful. It's quite good, and I think... It's a catch. Check it out. How about with some collabs with some new and old metal on the song Wake Up Dead featuring Lamb of God and Megadeth with feature from their vocalist Dave Mustaine. It was a bit slow on the start. In the beginning, it, it did feel a bit slow, but in my opinion, it makes up for it on the switch up towards the back end followed up with some kick-ass guitar solos. You can't go wrong with those. I think those two kind of cancel out at a certain point and it just kind of makes the track feel all right but it's still cool to see these two bands collab i mean it's, it's it's cool not too crazy about it but it's cool a boogie with the hoodie collabs with her on the song playa and i am feeling a lot like the throwback 2000s vibes on here her delivers a wonderful vocal performance boogie sounds okay i'm i'm not gonna paint on him i don't think he sounds bad on this instrumental sampling is not too shabby either it's not bad it's not bad. Hardwell is also out with a new track. This one is called Into the Unknown. It goes off with like this deep, dark rave showered with some white noise and bold finishes onto the bass. It's kind of creepy and it goes a little bit experimental if you ask me. Um, the finish is overall very professional. It sounds very high budget and I can tell that he took a lot of time touching, touching up this song. It's good. It's good. I like it. Got another track from Toro y Moi. This song is called Deja Vu, and it's definitely obvious the influences are coming from some 60s old school rock and roll. That's what makes the song really spark. It reminds me a lot of what I would hear from the White Album, from the Beatles especially. Um, it comes off with this little experimental twist, and um, it's quite impressive. It's quite impressive. I think it's a jam. I think it's something that would have really popped off around that time, and I'm enjoying it. 
I'm, I'm really excited for this upcoming record, so stay tuned for that. How about a little indie punk action from the band Surf Curses in the song Sugar? There is so much color painted into this picture on the chorus. Really gives off that post-punk vibe, great guitar versatility. Sound is pretty nice for an indie rocker, if you ask me. I think this could lead up to a wonderful record, so... Let's hope we get that. Next, we got some Chris Brown with the song a Warm Embrace. This beat, honestly, sucks. I don't know what's going on with the drums at all. I really don't know what the attempt is on here. Unfortunately, Chris's vocal talents just don't shadow over the problem enough for me. It sounds way too offset. Sounds awfully, awfully mixed in. It's bad. It's terrible. Next, we got Lupe Fiasco delivering with a little bit of a spoken reminiscence about his home in Chicago on the song 100 Chicago's. Now, I like the lyrical delivery, and it's also cool to me to know about the streets and locations that he referenced to in here because I am a Chicagoan myself. And I think this could have used a little bit more of a cinematic finish. I think that would have really put this over the top. Without it, it just feels way too one-dimensional. I mean, that's really what it is. It kind of just feels like a little exercise program that it kind of goes for just i don't know it just, it just feels like a pure reminiscence song but musically it just doesn't expand it doesn't proceed or move forward at all this wouldn't be a song that i'd really see myself putting on repeat and it is pretty forgettable We've got r&b pop combo in the next track lavender and roses with singers ibai and georgia smith wow the the chemistry the chemistry the science cannot experiment with this reaction with the chemistry between these two singers on here like wow the hook is is sweet it's luscious it's it's wonderful it's wonderfully produced to the core this song is just gorgeous i am loving the vibes on here check it 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 then we got another single from super organism called it's raining and also in the works with steven malcomus and dylan cat there's some psych and there's some hip hop on here and a little bit more of the experimental rock trickled in onto the song. It is, it's odd. It's a, it's kind of odd to wrap your head around. It's, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of things thrown around into the mix, especially verse to verse leading into the chorus on here. But um, it's, this is a really tough talk. This, this song is really tough to explain. It really is really tough to explain. But you know, I think if you're up for the change to hear some experimental, Hear what's going on with the song, especially if you're really like interested into sound design and what artists can really offer with their skills and their creativities on here. This is a good one. I think this is, makes a good experience. So if you're up for it, do it. Last but not least, we come to the new song from pop star Harry Styles. This one is called As It Was. Tune for the ear of indie pop listeners with some lo-fi melodies, delicate instrumentals, and a nice vocal performance from Harry too. I'm not left as stunned or impressed with the songwriting. I mean, I would be surprised if this songwriting was as complex as I normally prefer to, but it's mainly, it's mainly just a standard pop song. I mean, it sounds pretty lush, and I like Harry's voice. I think he sounds good on here. It doesn't need to be insane, like new into the alternative pop wave, or it doesn't really sound like something that would come off his last LP either, which I do like, so I like it. I think it's good. And that is it for this week's Singles of the Week, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, go to like, share, and comment down below. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Down in the description, you see all the links to the singles that I discussed about in this video, more videos, and also the links to my social media accounts so you can keep up with me on the daily. I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Ghost.